Hi, I'm Lynn for Up Track Family. Today's episode is all about recovery gear for four-wheel driver and overlanders. But before starting this, please let us know in the comment section below what is in your recovery kit. Now, here's what we think as a basic recovery kit for all overlanders and four-wheel drivers because we are more likely to get stuck while exploring off-track. And with a basic recovery kit, you will also be able to help others, which is a great experience. So here's our list to help you make the best choices. The first thing to have is a spare wheel and the tools to replace a wheel. Ideally, you should have a spare wheel identical to your other four wheels, which will allow you to continue your trip in the same conditions and repair your flat tire later. This detail may seem silly, but what's the point of having four good all-terrain tires if your spare wheel is a donut limited to 60 km per hour or even a winter tire of another size? To change a wheel, the basic equipment of the car can be sufficient, such as a bottle jack and a torque wrench for the nuts. Also, depending on where you broke down, it will be impossible to use a bottle jack because of the ground, and a base plate to put the jack on is a good idea. I can only advise you to bring at least one bottle of W40. This is your best friend but also a socket wrench with a good leverage and, if possible, a dynamometric wrench to be able to respect the tightening torque. It isn't a big investment, but this kind of tool is very useful and the more you want to become autonomous, the more it will be easier for you to solve these kinds of simple problems. On top of that, we have a small repair kit. This is to repair our self-punctures on the side of the road. As a result, we always have a spare wheel ready on hand. Over time, you'll understand it's necessary to have a small but complete enough toolbox in your car. On the roadside delivered to yourself, you will always miss the tool you need. The second most important thing is probably to own at least one strap. So here's our first tip concerning those straps is that it's important to have at least one strap that can pull a heavier weight than your vehicle. Now what type of straps? Is it best rigid straps or elastic straps? The rigid ones are rather useful for brief troubleshooting, for example if you have to pull your vehicle when it's stuck, and the elastic ones are rather useful for towing, but having already towed a vehicle over several miles, no straps, no elastic, no rigid is ideal. For that, the ideal is a drawbar, but as part of basic recovery kit, a strap will do the job. So here's our second tip concerning those straps, is that it's very important to have something to attach them to, so some shackles, because otherwise they will be absolutely useless. So if you do like those kinds of little tips, please do add a thumbs up to this video. Depends on how you call them, recovery or traction boards, sand boards, they are one of the most useful tools because it will get you out of trouble most of the time without the help of anyone. A strap can help you out of a hole only if another vehicle is there to tow you. But with boards, you can do a lot of very useful things. You can use them as a base for your jack, a shovel for dirt, snow, mud, and of course the most commonly known use and what they made for, a grip under your tires. Now, what type of boards to choose? Is it best metallic or plastic boards? We don't recommend using the aluminum boards, not only because of the lightweight of the plastic ones, but also because of their efficiency. We used aluminum plates at the very beginning, but didn't have a good experience. They didn't cross well and they did notch the profile of our tires. They also slipped between the mud and the tires and they were propelled at an incredible speed. Also, after they used, they were deformed and it was really annoying for the storage. We now have Max Trax plastic recovery boards. They have a very good grip under the tires and you can also use them for different purposes as said before. I won't dwell on this one, but a compressor is essential. All compressors, even low cost, do the job. We had that for years. You just connect it to your battery with crocodile clips or a big Anderson connector plug if you want to save time. 
Now, what is the difference between cheap and quality portable compressor? The only difference between a cheap or high-end portable compressor will be the inflation time and heat resistance. It may overheat to breakage. As said before, we had a cheap portable compressor for years, but over time we decided to invest in a fixed and powerful system with an air tank. We chose the ARB Twin Compressor. It's perfect for our use. We were able to mount it in the cabin and you can also mount it outside of the car because it doesn't fear the elements. It isn't a cheap device but the advantages and the comfort of use are undeniable. So next on the list of our recovery kit is, is it better to have a bottle jack or a high lift? We used for years a high lift jack. It's a great tool. It can lift the car very high with little effort, but you must be very careful because it's also a dangerous tool. My husband did manage to break one. You have to make sure it's well maintained because the base can slip and the jack can deflect and break under the weight of the vehicle. Since then, we haven't bought another one because my husband does more or less everything he needs to do with two small bottle jacks. So a high lift is a great tool, but it must be handled with care and a bottle jack is great too and really easy to use. So is having a winch an absolute necessity in your recovery gear? To make it clear, you will always need a winch when you don't have one and when you have one, it will almost never serve you. The winch isn't really indispensable and you will rarely need it if you have straps and traction boards, but in some cases it could be very helpful. The question is how often will you find yourself in a situation where you would need a winch? We installed one after a very big fail in the mud. It was a really complicated situation, but back then my husband was poorly prepared and seriously lacked of experience. You can check out this fun little video up there. At that time with the aluminum boards, he couldn't do anything and it was finally by putting branches and wood and digging under the wheels that he pulled out the car without any other tool than a shovel. A winch would have greatly helped because it was in a forest with so many points to hook on. Now imagine you find yourself where there's no trees, no vehicles with you, absolutely nothing to attach your winch to it will be totally useless. But again, if the winch doesn't help you directly, it will certainly allow you one day to get someone out of bad situation. So if you want to feel secure, install a winch, but know that you can already get out of 99% of bad situations with traction boards and a strap. So if you have a good 12 volt setup and double battery in your camper, you shouldn't have any breakdown, but having the jump start cables is a necessity to have it in your basic recovery kit, either for you just in case and also to help others. Now this one is an absolute necessity to have in your four wheels driver. It can get you out of very bad off-road situations or help you while bivouacking. So having a shovel in your four-wheel drive is a necessity in your recovery kit. So there you go with our recovery kit listing. I hope you enjoyed. Please do take a few seconds to subscribe to the channel and turn on the notification bell. And also again, please let us know what do you have in your recovery kit. Talk to you soon. Bye.